Hello and welcome to Kill the Space Program, uh, our second tutorial out of a series of historical missions. Um, as you can see, I'm a little bit more prepared this time, which is good, uh, because obviously I'm getting messages again. Um, obviously, it's better. There's um, the old Sputnik still in orbit. It's been going going great guns. There's a little mouse over the moon. I just thought I'd show you that that was still there. And today we're going to build the next sort of main event in um, in space history, the Vostok One, which, as you all know, of course, transported Yuri Gagarin up into space back in um, 1961. Up in space, did a full orbit, came down safely, and was the first man ever to go into space, which is incredible. So we're going to celebrate his achievement today by trying as best we can to um, to recreate it. Um, so yep, man capsule uh, Mark Two is it? Come well, was just double check. That's a Mark One command pod with a Mark Sixteen parachute on it, with a stack D coupler, a TR eighteen A, and you got a, a T four hundred fuel tank with an LV nine hundred nine. And the second stage, you've got another stack D coupler. Whack in the um, RC5 fuel tank, and then what we're we going to put on that fuel tank. Oh, right, there's the RC5. Then there's the 800 fuel tank with a big old engine on it, T30. That's our second stage. That's going to push us out into um, into a better orbit. Our stabilizing thrusters on there, RC5s quads. Uh. Yeah, I just had a little play around there. Obviously, I'm watching this. I'm not. This isn't as I'm playing it because um, the amount of times I have to come back out and it's edited basically all my attempts, so it makes it look like I've just done it in one uh, sneakily. I've edited it together to make it look amazing, but this took a long time today. This took a long time, <laughs> and it's night time now, and I'm just going to put the narration on and then shoot it out to you guys. So there it is. That's the uh, the Vostok one. And I've just got a text message. Try and guess where that's from if you heard the uh, if you heard the music. So that is Vostok One. Uh, Yogi Garin's in there, all happy, comfortable, cozy, and we're gonna try and get this baby into orbit. So first stage is the easiest. Um, what I like to do there is just to. As soon as it stacks decouple, I like to have find my boosters at the same time. So we're going to put SAS on, and also our advanced stabilizing, whatever that's called. Whack the thrust up to maximum, and we're going to shoot up into space. Right, first stage, you want to just keep it straight. I don't hear because I start looking at something else. I think there was a cat on the roof next door, and it caught my eye. So as you can see, I'm just going to power that back. Waste a bit of fuel, but we're okay, we're okay. Jebediah or Yuri in the, in the bottom corner there is a bit panicky, but we're okay, we're doing alright. We've got a little bit of a spin on, but again, it's fine. We've got a little bit of drag, that's all. Take the burst, and that's where that second stage comes in handy. Now, we're going to shoot up to 10,000 meters again, and because we're a lot heavier this time than our, than our original Sputnik launcher, we're going to do a very slow gravity turn and you'll be able to see how slow that is now so I'd be right on the dot if it was my last mission I'd be right on that yellow dot but I'm gonna go real real slow real careful and just start the slow turn and I'm gonna keep monitoring that um, that distance it's not gonna jet out like it did last time it's gonna be a lot more gradual and a lot more controllable which is something that surprised me a few times at the start so this is something like the third fourth attempt because I was turning too fast basically so that's something to get used to just um, be slower than you think you need to be for this gravity turn that's the only advice I can give but then it's a lot more controllable once it hits that 100,000 meters point which is just grand because look here you'll see how slow that is and if you go back and look at the other one it's so different and then this little booster this is a little bit of a demon it's very fuel efficient but we're very light now we've only got 
fuel and Yuri to power. So we're okay. We're okay. We're just going to keep our eye on that um, apoapsis and we're going to keep it at around 100,000 meters and we're just going to try and um, lengthen out that, that arc. We're going to try and make it into an orbit if you like. I was really trying to um, organize myself because I'm going to what the next mission is I'll tell you in a bit but I was really trying to organize myself this time because I need to be spot on with my orbits and um, I'm not looking forward to the next mission I don't mind telling you it's going to be very tricky it's something I've never done before uh, I played with orbits um, you've seen a, a very early Kerbal mission I did about a year ago now I guess I've been to the moon I've landed on the moon I've not been able to get back from the moon but hopefully for this um for this series I might I might do better. I might do a lot better. And um, this is pre um the new patch. The patch came out today just after I'd um done this, recorded this. So uh play we'll play around with the new features soon. As you can see, as you can hear, I just got another text message. Quiet on set. Flipping heck. These people keep bugging me. It was popular. People like to to talk to people who have been in space. And this is where you can see it start jetting out now. And there goes the apoapsis and the proapsis. Much better. And it's just arcing out nice. Now I've got the angle a bit weird there. And it has bowed out quite a bit. And this, I, I'm going to check my fuel. Because I was just going to leave it at that. But I feel like I've got enough fuel to add a manoeuvre. So I can really tighten that circle in. And just um, like I say, I wanted to nail the, nail the orbits. And really really focus down and, and get myself a bit more a bit more disciplined with what I'm trying to achieve here, a bit more scientific because uh, with later missions I can't afford to be slack because <laughs> I've, I've had a quick look forward to sort of the next few missions and um, this is the last of the USSR missions uh, next time we'll be um, flying a, a US mission which is nice um, I'm sure I've got some information on um, the ship but I don't uh, Yuri Gagarin said when he came back um, orbiting earth in the spaceship I saw how beautiful our planet is people let us preserve and increase its beauty not destroy it that's nice isn't it a lot of um, people have been into space and seen seen earth from orbit and from the moon have come back much more humble I suppose it puts everything into perspective once you've seen earth or Kerbin as it is so you go, I've, I've added my manoeuvre, I'm just um, playing around with it a little bit, I've still got a bit of time I think. I'm going to speed up because I really want to get this burn on the right time, so I'm watching my um, estimated burn time at the bottom corner, or the, sorry, the bottom centre. And when it gets to about 30 seconds that's when I'm going to start the burn. I can't really read it from here, the screen's very small as I'm watching this. I might even be burning, I can't tell. I think I am actually, it looks like I am, yeah, I'm burning already. And I'm keeping a, a very close eye on my fuel because I'm very aware that I don't have RC5 thrusters on my capsule, on my command pod. So that is just going to be floating once I run out of fuel, so I'm going to be a little bit slow on the burn and cut the engines with X and as you can see I'm gonna have a little bit of trouble here closing this um, <laughs> closing this option box I can't remember how you do it it's only been a day since I played it but I've been busy I've been very busy I'm not like the Yogs cast who do this professionally I'm just just a guy just a guy there we go closed and you can see I'm just within the orbit of Sputnik It'd be nice to have seen the old old thing, but here we are, kind of opening, can you? And this is the inside pod view. This is what you you already saw, Yuri Gagarin. What I realised was I was on the um, the dark side of the Earth, so we just sped time up a little bit. Press the one button there, and sped time up so we get to the um, get to the light side. So we've actually got something we can look at rather than just a big black orb. Which is no good to anyone. No good to anyone. 
I'm going to try and <laughs> rotate us so we can actually see curving. It's very hard to find out that very small window. I do have a lot of trouble. But, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Is it the other way? Is it the other way? Is it straight up? Oh, oh, there it is. There she blows. It is a really beautiful game, really. I think I've always been mystified by space, though, so I'm sort of biased because that is cool. Look at that for view. That's what you already saw with back in 1961. So here, I'm just going to start thinking about re-entry. And if I re-enter there, I'm going to land in the water. So I'm going to plan ahead a little bit. Stick a marker down just before that landmass. And then just play around with the filters until I just basically change the arc. So it's going to smash me straight into the planet. I've got, I've got enough fuel, basically. I've got enough just to tip me into back into the planet. So it's a very scary idea running out of fuel, <laughs> even even in this game, because you put a lot of hard work into building these ships and getting all the maths right and and working it all out. Just to run out of fuel, it's really frustrating. So I try and I'm trying to be strict on this mission. I did a lot better than I thought I would, and we're going to burn full. And you'll actually see that we have a little bit of fuel left over, but let's just basically what we're doing there, which is pro, pro grade bursting straight into the planet, just to tip us into the atmosphere, and then once the atmosphere is gone, we're just dragging basically, and then we're gonna we're gonna land no matter what. But we're trying to be a bit more specific in what we're doing, to be honest. So we could have just landed in the water. I want to land on. You can see I've run out of fuel because so I'm just mucking around. Well, I've still got a bit of fuel left that I don't need, so I'm just mucking around. I sort of try and get it so the fuel was going to land in the water, and me land in the um, on the land, like a safe fuel land. But that didn't that didn't happen. I was just uh, just dreaming. Now imagine how scary that is. Flipping at Yori, just diving straight into the planet, not knowing if anything's going to work. But he made it. God bless him, he made it. Yeah, that's a very eerie sight. I'm going to look back in a second and just see where that fuel tank is. There it is, though, it's just dropping behind me. It sort of looks good for land in the water, but I think it just follows us onto land. A couple hundred, hundred meters maybe. Probably more than that, actually, a couple of miles into land. It's hard to judge. Always struck me as weird that curbing for being quite an advanced civilization. Oh, there you go, that's a really cool feature. Look, re entry. I love that. That's probably the best part. Of <laughs> One of the best additions to the game. I never used to have that when I used to play a long time ago. But yeah, that, is, that does look great. I don't know if it causes damage yet, but I, I tilted my. Um, my. Uh, is it? Is it the bottom? I can't remember. I tilted the, the back end to, towards it anyway, just so it wouldn't damage the pod, just in case, because I, I wasn't too sure. And at this stage, you don't want anything to go wrong. And that's it, we're in the atmosphere. All that's left to do is drop. And of course, we've got the parachute nice and ready. So I'm just hovering over the space bar. And watching the, um, the altimeter drop. Now I think I wait till 7,000 meters. There's no reason for that, but this just seems to be a nice sort of time to do it. It will, the parachute will open at 500 meters above, uh, above ground. You'll see that it looks like it's a lot higher on the altimeter, but that's because that goes to sea level, and of course we're in the mountains, and so it should open any time now wait for that to happen and I do start to speed up time because once the uh, parachute opens it's just interminable I'm waiting for it at the moment it's, it's been okay because you know we've not been doing too much 
and it's been it's been quite a quick series really, got a quite a quick episode. For saying we've been into space, done a, a full orbit and come back down again. What's that? Fifteen minutes. It's not too bad. As Yuri, not knowing if he's going to survive or not. And of course, we'll be fine now. Nothing could go wrong. Nothing can surely go wrong. Or could it? Huh? Could it? Could it? No, of course not. We had a parachute open. What are you thinking? And now we've landed, we can get out the pod. And this is the first time I've ever done this, so I fall over instantly. <laughs> and then I grab back. And I get back in, I think, by accident. <laughs> yep, get back in by accident. Jump back out. Climb down. Climb up. And then we're off. Yay! And you can walk around the surface <laughs> with really weird controls. But there is Yuri Gagarin. Back on solid ground. Another, another fly in the eye for old Uncle Sam. Another victory for the USSR in the space race. But next week, it's time for the Americans to bite back. And we've got a special mission coming up. It's going to be the first time I've ever done it. So hopefully I'll learn a lot. Hopefully you guys will learn a lot. Um, it's always good to check through your little figures at the back there. Just to see what you could do better. It's quite an uneventful trip, this one. You should see the ones that failed. <laughs> oh my god. Spectacular fails this time. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and leave a comment. Tell me what you want to see. Tell me how this is going. Bye.